Let's start off with you, uh, Dr. Rashid Rahman. With everything that's happened in parliament now, one parliament, two majority leaders, and how the state of affairs is now. And you uh, told me about a week ago that uh, it's troubling, to say the least. Has the trouble reduced in any way? Um, good morning, Alfred, and uh, good morning to my co-panelists here and our uh, viewers. <clears throat> I don't think the troubles have reduced. Uh, in contrast, I think we are seeing what I witnessed many years ago uh, in Malawi when a good friend of mine became speaker, a very excellent speaker of parliament, uh, accomplished constitutional lawyer and finance minister in Malawi. And his tenure uh, was characterized by some of what we are beginning to see here. Um, and he went down uh, as one of the worst speakers of parliament in Malawi. Uh, his challenge was that, you know, the gridlock and all the problems started right at the beginning of his mandate. Mm. Uh, we are lucky that in this country, what we are seeing now is towards the end of the mandate of this parliament. Um, you know, since the beginning of the eighth parliament, we've seen um, instances where our parliamentarians and sometimes uh, people they work with from a distance mm -hmm. are very eager to use the rules to govern the way the house conducts its business and here when i say to use the rules i mean you just gave us an example mm -hmm. where uh, the standing orders and the constitution have been invoked to recall parliament uh, we've seen this happen many times in this eighth parliament we've seen also our members of parliament and sometimes um, individuals outside parliament running very quickly to the courts, you know, to try to uh, interpret the work of parliament. Mm -hmm. It is all fine, uh, Alfred. I mean, we have to stick to the rules. Um, but, you know, Let's step one, uh, take one step back mm -hmm. and think about a parliament. A parliament is supposed to be a deliberative body. Uh, and the reason why we have the 275 people representing all of us is just simply to avoid a situation where, assuming all the 35 million or so Ghanaians, we all go and sit in a chamber mm -hmm. and we want to deliberate. Yes. I mean, it's going to be very difficult to come to any agreement. So sure. we say 275 people go and represent us and at all times try and talk and come to some compromise uh, and agree on how the direction, uh, what direction of um, affairs our country should pursue. Mm -hmm. It does not suggest that it's going to be easy at all times. Mm -hmm. It doesn't at all. And that is why we have leaders. But what we are seeing now is that the least challenge, then people will run to the court. The least challenge, people would start invoking the, the rules. It's fine, but it simply means that tomorrow when somebody is also not, not, uh, not pleased, they will just invoke the rule just to frustrate um, you know, it's, it's, it's the same thing like, I mean, the filibuster system that exists in the United States where somebody can just get up in the Senate and start talking and talking and talking just nonstop, mm -hmm. just to frustrate uh, the process. But they have mechanisms to stop that. Uh, in our system, I don't think we have some of those mechanisms, mm -hmm. which suggests that... You know, when things become difficult, we expect our leaders, 
to sit down and talk. A few weeks ago, I was talking to a senior MP when mm. Parliament was being recalled and all the issues around the dome and the, the chamber is not ready and so on. And I said to him, you know, the way I see recalls happen in this Parliament, if we are not careful, uh, we wake up someday for a very simple reason. Mm -hmm. People would go and marshal the numbers. I mean... 15% is not difficult to, 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 to arrive at. Indeed. And then the speaker's hands will be tied and the parliament has to be recalled. I mean, at you know, extreme cost to the nation um, and so on and so forth. Um, and if you do that for one, uh, you would not have any reason not to do that for another. Another. Mm. You know, so all to say, Alfred, it looks as if the troubles are not uh, going away. Rather, they are beginning to become more serious. And it looks as if also, I mean, um, we have a lawyer, I mean, I, I amongst us here, so mm. maybe he might be able to tell us. The more I read the situation, the more I think that maybe our constitution, uh, the way it's, it's framed by, I mean, the, the framers, and the way some of the provisions are made uh, have been designed to make the work of parliament a little bit more difficult. Really? Why is that? Well, I mean, if, um, as some say, we look at the constitutional provision in 97 uh, G and H, uh, I'm not a lawyer, but like somebody said, even if you give that to children, they can read it and understand exactly what it means. Mm -hmm. But somebody, and, I mean, and you hear lawyers argue that, no, that's not the case. What we are reading is not what we are seeing, and that's not the meaning. Um, so for me, it means that one, as well as many other articles that I believe are candidates for uh, the revision, uh, if we ever get to the point where we are revising our constitution, uh, would have to be given more clarity so that all of us can read it and we can all be on the same page that mm. uh, there will be no uh, confusion yes that one plus one is two uh, one plus one is not 2.5 or three and so on and so forth because if we go back to the basics i mean the idea of the separation of powers i mean you know is simply that you want to um, divide the functioning of government among three kind of different groups, the presidency, the legislature, and the, the judiciary. Mm -hmm. But some checks are introduced in there to make sure that, you know, um, the courts, for instance, can declare what the president does and what parliament does um, wrong. But... I mean, I think the lawyers will say unconstitutional. So mm -hmm. if you are saying it is wrong, you have to show us what constitutional provision that has breached so that it's in clear terms. Then everybody is supposed to abide by the law. Uh, then the president can veto the work of parliament, uh, and, mm -hmm. but not perhaps in a way that we say to parliament so, so you, you, cease, so. cease and desist and don't bring this here. Uh, I but I mean, using I mean the the, the rules that we all agree on, mm -hmm. and then Parliament can also impeach the president and or maybe censure his ministers and so on. Uh, but it looks like um, this is becoming a little bit difficult for us. And Alfred, that's why you know many countries today. If you go to I mean a lot of the European countries, I mean they have opted to go with you know, a Westminster type of uh, government where, you know, sometimes it's very difficult to see some of these challenges that we are seeing in the kind of suppression uh, that we operate here. So you're sharing that concern about the Supreme Court's directive to Parliament, in fact, to the Speaker, for that matter, to have the execution of this, his decision state, especially because of the, the doctrine of the separation of powers to the extent that subsequent even rulings have sought to make that quite clear. Yes, you know, I share in that, I mean, the Supreme Court, uh, and clearly because we operate 
I mean, a system of separation of powers. The court have the powers of judicial review, as mm -hmm. the lawyers will say. Uh, but these are normally used very rarely. These are used very rarely. And when they are used, uh, they are supposed to provide clarity rather than confusion. Mm -hmm. You know, because we are all supposed to be law-abiding. Once we sign up and say we are a democratic country, we are supposed to be all law-abiding mm -hmm. so that the Supreme Court, as they say, is a final, has the final that. say when it comes to matters of law. And when it says that, then all of us are supposed to be, I mean, we'll fall in line whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. huh. But, you know, where, uh, again, the outcome of the pronouncement of the Supreme Court, you know, raises a lot of questions um, rather than provide clarity then you get yourself in uh, the kind of situation that we find ourselves in.